Brian Michael Bendis and Sanford Green pit the Justice League against a time-traveling OMAC as the hero is blasted back through time, causing a series of time-related problems around the world that the League must race to stop before the entire timeline falls apart. Brian Michael Bendis devotes this new annual to a fun one-off time travel storyline that also acts as Wonder Woman's proper return into the Justice League, with the team celebrating their friend's return with a impromptu party. I really liked how the book was set out into different chapters, separating the different smaller teams into their own little stories within the time travel plot, and the team choices here were a lot of fun since it's not your typical team-ups. The inclusion of the original OMAC hero was a lot of fun, seeing as that Bendis has also brought people like Kamal back, so to get people from that era of DC Comics back into mainstream comics is pretty damn cool, but he really didn't do much and was really only there to deliver some exposition and set up that reveal of Hawk Girl's future adventures with him, which would be a fun thing to explore in a future annual or a different issue of some other book. The big reveal as well is that the issue connects to the big Legion of Superheroes vs Justice League storyline, with the inclusion of the Gold Lantern Ring being kind of the catalyst of this story hinting that it has to be destroyed or it's going to cause some type of damage, which I imagine will be directly referenced and brought up in the events of those upcoming events. Sanford Green tackles the massive annual with his signature colourful gritty art style that fit the story really well. I really liked a lot of the panelling he did and how most of the time it wasn't the typical 6 to 9 panels per page, but really fun angles and perspectives and even a great page that takes advantage of the four different versions of the villain, combining all of their faces to make one face which was really quite cool. Justice League 2022 Annual was a fun one-off time travel adventure that balanced a lot of characters together for an action-packed story with some great connections to upcoming events and other Justice League stories. I'm going to give this issue an 8.5 out of 10. Justice League 2022 Annual finds Omak blowing his way through the Electric City goons, facing down the super rich as Brother Eye covers him from above. The hero engages a mutant monster in an explosive battle, emerging victorious as Brother Eye warns him of the other terrors waiting inside for him. Omak kicks in the door, announcing himself and ordering the people inside to surrender. The scientists tell him that the woman he's after is nearby, but Omak doesn't know what he's talking about, saying that he's there to stop them from creating more mad science experiments. Men say that they didn't make her as Omak finds they have Hawk Girl in a stasis chamber. He asks Brother Aya what he's looking at, but the AI isn't so sure, not knowing if it's a robot, a clone, or an alien. In the past, Hawk Girl talks with the League, knowing that they need to do this, and they're always in constant crisis and chaos, and she wants to stop for just one minute today and celebrate that Wonder Woman has returned. She tells him that she wants them all to share how they feel, knowing it's so difficult to surprise anyone, but she wants this to be be a surprise for Diana. Soon Diana arrives at the hall, thinking that she is late to the team meeting, so Hawk Girl decides to just spring the surprise on her anyway, welcoming her back to the Justice League. Diana is glad to see all her friends, eager to tell them of her journey when suddenly Omak teleports in. The League confront the being, telling him to stand down as he notices Hawk Girl. Omak tries to contact Brother Eye, asking how it brought him there, as the team wonder what they should do with him, with Superman wanting Kalex to move him inside the hall, while the others think they should call a doctor. Omak soon passes out from the shock as Batman recognises him as the future Omak and obviously he didn't expect to be there. Later after stabilising Omak, Batman finds himself hesitant to wake the being as Superman knows that time travel sucks even if you meant to do it. Batman finds his tachyon readings are all over the place and he's using science they haven't even yet invented. Bruce reassures the team though that they are safe since Omak is cut off from Brother Eye. Clark wants Kalex to run some tests on the man and give Omak a moment to gather himself, so as the team wait, Wonder Woman meets with Naomi, remembering their brief meeting at the Battle of Metropolis against the Legion of Doom, remembering that she's friends with Cassie. Naomi reveals that she's actually just texting with Wonder Girl, telling Diana that she can't believe that she's on the Justice League. Diana Diana is looking forward to seeing her skill and Naomi is ready for another sparring match, but then reconsiders it after remembering that Diana and her mother are warrior women, probably spar quite a fair bit. Diana takes her leave, knowing that if she ever changes her mind, she's always up for a fight. Flash thinks they should call in Black Adam and get his wisdom on this, as Kalex 
pulls up a world map, revealing to the heroes that Omag arrived by riding a macro burst of uncharted energy, and at the locations he has marked on the map, other pieces of that same energy were found. While he is unsure what the energy is, he will keep scanning local medias for reports of other time travellers, as Batman thinks that dispatching teams to the locations are a good idea, since if this is time travel, they need to be overly cautious. Getting the team together, he tells them their goal is to help Omak and send him home before any damage is done, wanting Hawkgirl to stay around Omak for when he wakes up. Hippolyta begins setting the teams, and Wonder Woman wants Naomi to be on her team along with her mother. Three women head to the Louisiana swamps, searching for the location of the energy when they come across the seemingly abandoned Hall of Doom. Diana tells her mother of the trouble Lex Luthor and his legion of criminals caused them recently as they approach the hall, finding it to be rather outdated. Inside, they come across a man who recognises the heroes, bowing before Diana before recognising Naomi as the teenage version of Queen Naomi. Elsewhere, Black Canary, Green Arrow and Aquaman battle the riots of Blackgate, all instigated by Killer Croc. After the riot dies down, the heroes thank the guards for helping them in their investigation, shown to the room where the energy was tracked to. One of the guards is reluctant to open the door, seeing as that's the cell of Solomon Grundy, who recently killed and ate 11 guards before they got him in the cell. Aquaman knows that they need John, calling for Superboy as he arrives, asking to look inside the cell with his x-ray vision, so they don't wake Grundy. John looks inside, not seeing Solomon at all and something totally different. Opening the cell, they find a strange being in liquid, causing the guards to panic and call for a lockdown, thinking that Grundy has escaped. Superboy knows the being isn't human as it introduces itself as Doreen, wondering if the heroes want to tell them about their bad day offering them all a temple massage and a drink. Canary wants to know what the hell is going on, as Black Adam meanwhile finds himself overlooking a fallen empire of Leviathan. Landing in the crumbling city, he finds a man picking through the rubble. The man waves before realising who Black Adam is, but he asks which Black Adam he is. Adam tires of his games, sending lightning and thunder all over the place, as the man realises this is the bad guy Black Adam. Apologising, since everyone knows how rather notorious he was, then he just became a hero. The man Man is unsure of what part of the timeline he is in, so he doesn't know if Adam is going to kill him or help him. The man continues to prattle on as Adam demands to know who he is, and the man reveals his name is Epoch and he is a Lord of Time, but now he is lost, not even knowing what year it is. Before Adam can tell him, Solomon Grundy appears, saying that Grundy was there on a Monday, wondering where he is now. Adam is attacked by the zombie as Epoch continues to rummage through the debris, looking for something and hoping that he finds it before Lobo or some other problem shows up. Omak meanwhile awakens to Batman telling him who, where he is, but the being knows he hasn't met Batman yet, demanding to he remove his mask so he can see the man who dares tie him up. He demands to know where he is, wanting to be returned home as he tries to contact Brother Eye. Hawkgirl tells him to settle down as Omak recognises her, thinking that she brought him there against his will. Black Canary soon contacts Batman as the, her team battle another time travelling anomaly. Aquaman sure hopes that Flash didn't knock something over and change the timeline yet again as Superboy is taken down by the monster. Batman fills Omak in on who the Justice League are, telling them of the time travel catastrophe they find themselves in and how they need his help. Omak agrees to help, telling Hawkgirl in his time Kendra was encased in a stasis tube and when he went to rescue her, he was teleported back to her time. Hawkgirl knows that her future doesn't look too good as Batman tells Flash and Hawkgirl to remember what time and date it is since they're going to be fighting someone who uses time as a weapon. Flash tells him to relax as he grabs Hawkgirl, speeding off to back up Aquaman and Black Canary's team. Batman tells Omak that Wonder Woman has already caught one of the time anomalies as someone finds it fortunate that the other League members left Batman and Omak alone. Flash and Hawkgirl meanwhile arrive at the battle, taking down the monster as a younger version of Epoch appears, telling the team that he is the Lord of Time as another version from the future appears in front of Batman and Omak, telling them that he is from the year 3786, knowing the heroes won't believe him but he 
needs their help. The Ella Epoch is captured by Wonder Woman, telling the hero via the lasso of truth that he is so scared of what happens next. The young Epoch meanwhile tells Black Adam that the 21st century is still working out time travel rules, but this is what it looks like when they break those rules. The Epochs explain that he is a lord of time and he works on a scale larger than the heroes can think of and their reality has been shattered a few times so they don't remember meeting him before right now, and he misjudged a measure somewhere along the way and got stuck in multiple times at the same time, resulting in a cyborg, old, middle-aged and young version of himself there at the same time. He reveals that while it was fun to begin with, the mind and body aren't meant to do this and he's trying to find a way out of this and luckily there are a few things in this time that can help him, but the item he needs the most is lost in time itself. He knows that it was the centerpiece of one of the greatest moments in the galaxy's history and he knows at one of the places his multiple versions went to, it is there, and he hopes the League will leave him to his work, letting him find this item and allow him to return home. The multiple epochs all continue babbling about taking the item they need, with one saying that it's inside the belly of the creature Aquaman was fighting. John tries to help, looking inside the creature's stomach with his x-ray vision, but Epoch says that he doesn't need their help and no one can help him and he must do this himself. The four epochs attack, with one sealing Hawkgirl away, causing her to blink out of existence before the Flash can save her. Flash knows the villain will break the time stream, but Epoch says that it was just a time pop and Kendra is alive in another time, demanding the heroes let him do his work and she'll reappear again tomorrow. Suddenly a portal opens and Hawkgirl, now donning some war armor, appears, demanding the villain give her what he seeks. Epoch notices the device in her hands, learning that she got it from him years in the future, knowing that even Epoch wants to stop himself. She zaps him with the device, which begins sending all the different versions of Epoch back to their original home timelines. But before he does so, Epoch tells him that he needs the gold, telling Batman that if he ever finds a gold lantern ring, he is to destroy it. With Epoch defeated, the team reunite with Cork Girl, revealing that she got the future version of the man to help her, and she in turn was helped by Omak since he found and rescued her from the stasis tube, allowing her to help him overthrow the evil corporation that had taken over the Earth at the time. Oliver asks what the future looked like and Kendra knows they have a lot of work ahead of them to ensure what she has seen doesn't happen. She tells the heroes that Omak was the greatest man she ever met as later on Diana meets with her mother, who is surprised that the League seemed to fight Time Masters quite often. She says she originally sent her daughter to this world to learn some lessons, but now she realizes she never learned learnt those lessons herself. Diana asks if this is why she joined the Justice League while she was gone, asking if she's going to stay on. Hippolyta decides that she's going to be a come and go hero, telling her daughter to stay on the League since the League needs her and she needs the League. Hippolyta also tells Diana something she thought she would never say, and that is Black Adam is heading for true greatness now that he's part of the team. As the team tell each other of their experiences with the different epochs in the timeline, Batman is told by the Flash that the device Kendra used to send Epoch back to his time also fixed the time stream damage, turning everything to how it was. He wonders what the villain said about a gold lantern, thinking it must be some future thing. Kendra knows that the gold lantern wasn't in the future she was in, as Batman asks if with Hal being caught away, are there any actual lanterns left on Earth? Naomi knows a teen lantern, so Batman decides that he'll contact Hal and John and have Kellex scan the databases for anything on the Gold Lantern, but seeing the rings and their power sources are very specific, he isn't sure what to look for as in the Louisiana Swamp, Gold Lantern Ring unearths itself amongst the rock. 